Okay, let's have another go. Stendhal, let's play D4, a bit of change, a bit of variety. That uh, King's Engine system with um, Knight GE2 I think is quite attractive, actually. In some respects, maybe it's a little bit of a surprise weapon and it's still kind of dangerous. I think its danger can be underestimated. Let me have B5 square here. Um, so can I go for h4, h5? Because that e4 is quite well supported, so I don't think this is as effective with the knight here in any case. Um, so bishop g5 could be annoying, or just hg. Is he really going to take with the f-pawn? It seems anti-positional. I mean, maybe. Okay, maybe he takes... Okay, can I play for queen d2 and bishop h6 and just castle queenside? So bishop h6, mind you f2 is a bit vulnerable. I think I do want to weaken his squares for a hack attack. There's nothing clever here like knight h5, I think. I can just leave that, I can, think I can just castle, unless knight g4 is dangerous. I'm taking f3, is that so bad? Uh, I think I'll just castle. Okay. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, yes. All right. Okay. Maybe maybe this wasn't such a hot idea. Uh, I can take though and play f3. Now I can try and just double on that h4. I mean, the f file dynamic is a bit. Doesn't seem that great now. I can just uh I think I'll encourage G five if he wants to play G five as well. I think I'll encourage that. Nope. Okay, what about B four? Is that too provocative or just B three? If knight takes I always got knight A two at the moment. I hope. I was opening up this diagonal, okay. Gotta stay away from that. I'll go back here. Good move. He's got this diagonal on the trigger. Uh, so, I think a safety point is King B1 here before doing anything else. Uh, just to make sure that Knight B3 is not working. In fact, Queen C1 might even be useful. As well as doubling rooks just to provoke H5. Or Queen C2 could be useful for B4. And then Queen B3 later and maybe C5. I suppose he wants to play g5, g4. Actually, on g5, there's knight h5. So if I double mm, h5, queen c2 for b4, knight a6, queen b3, I can look forward to c5 there as well as this pawn. Or I can put the rook on c1, and same plan, queen c2, b4, queen b3. The rook's more useful for supporting the c5 there. Um, I think Queen C2, yeah, I think this is interesting. Really, how will he react to B4 and this plan? Might be a bit of a surprise plan. Play on this side. Now A3 is loose and I can play Rook C1. Also, Knight, just like this, the D3 maybe, Knight on, with a tempo to D3. In fact, Queen A3, what is he doing after Queen A3? Can I not just take that? <laughs> I can go Queen A7, go after this knight with my Queen, or Queen A8, ridiculous move. Queen A7, I'm on C7. Is he going to tie down his whole Queen? I can still, I can try and centralise this knight to D3. Although G5, G4 is going to be hard hitting. But Queen A7, uh, it's, it's not good to attack with the queen. I can seal that knight off but then it comes back to c5 to haunt me. So I think I think I'll get ready for this um c5 from black. Uh or in fact this knight maneuver to d3. Knight c1 to d3. My advantage is on the queen side. Clearly. 
I mean, he might sack a rook with rook f3. Um, okay, I'll connect my rooks now. And then go for this c5 break. Aha, uh -huh. there's always knight f2 here as well to stop g4. Um, this can support rook b2. So I've got g5, there's a knight f2. I think I'll play this anyway because knight h6 is a bit of a menace here. No, it hasn't got g4 covered by anything. Okay, he's weakening g5. Um, so queen a7 just, that looks really quite annoying. Just going for c7, <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, now knight b5. Going for c7 again it is a classic weakness in the king's engine. Um, he's protecting with the thing over there. If I support this and then play for c5, what about knight d3 followed by c5? Now c5 here, this is a thematic break. Let's try and expose that c7 weakness. <coughs> Hmm, looks pretty juicy. This pass pawn, maybe b6 for c6, but take c6, dominating the queen side, just get the rook back to support the pass pawn, or is there another better method here? If takes queen c5, I think c6 for b6, or just b6. If it takes b7, I think this is a good pass pawn opportunity to simplify with b6. C6 might complicate might complicate things. Then again, it might not. I'm still threatening B6. I'm ruling the knight out of D7. So I think that's the <laughs> that's the most juicy, surely, to play this. I'm dominating that A5. I can even play Rook A2 to stop any Rook A8s. I've got B6 in reserve. If I play Rook B2, Rook C1, B6, the both Rooks are behind both pawns. So Rook C1. Okay, I'll play like this. His rook's going to have to take t t some time to get to a8 here. So I'm playing for b6. So rook c1 and b6. I'm left with this past pawn. Knight e5 needs to be factored in at all times now as a forcing move. So b6 here. Um, I think then I'm threatening to take the pawn on c7 on rook a8. It's looking pretty good. Pass pawn time, pass pawn time. Okay, so knight e5, forcing move, doesn't do anything right now. If I just go for rook b7, protected by the other rook, so there's more options. Rook a7, rook, rook b7. Okay. Try and break down the resistance simply. Check. Now, okay, has he got counterplay with this? Do I need to sort this out? Or can I just go for that uh, with knight f2? There's knight f2, there's knight h to, to f4. If I take here, we'll see what he does here. He can't take there, that pawn's queening. Check. So I'll just go for that pawn. That's g5. Okay, if I bring the king in, because I've got f4 covered. Oh, I haven't got g3 covered. Okay, if I just bring the king in up there to b6, I think mean, that's pretty cruel because <laughs> I think mean, he's overloaded. Okay, he's resigned. He's lost on time. Oh, I think that was pretty cool strategically. This is an interesting uh, system. I think mean, it's it's confusing. As the player with black, see, am I playing on the king side for a hack attack? That's like an early statement. That's going to be a hack attack. And then I, I've waited for him to weaken himself over here, and then switch the whole thing. I know losing the light square bishop is a concession, and almost knight d3 works, but it, I've got I've got the a2 square covered. Thankfully, I don't know if that um, holds. But uh, now this he's just so weak on this side of the board that a3 is dropping like a ripe apple. And then c7 is the next logical target. It's getting the pieces to sort of go for the c7 pawn. 
I've got the advantage fully on the queen side. It's like playing where you're. If you play where you're strong, I think there's less backfire. If you play where you're weak, there's backfire. You know, even if he won a pawn side, I've got loads of pressure on this side of the board, um, and he's not winning two anyway. But he was threatening a knight to c5, so I extinguished that. I think that was a good sort of counterplay removal Check. game. Well, didn't have much to um, to worry about. Not many tactical liabilities either. I created myself to add to the worry. I think it was it was a reasonable uh, positional game. I don't know what you guys think on YouTube. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.